What's up, fellow garage golfers? Rolling here with Garage Golf, where we provide extraordinary golf info for the extra ordinary golfer. Today's video is all about E6 version 1.6 and our initial impressions on that simulator program. Stay tuned and check it out. Thanks for watching and welcome back. Please forgive me, my eyes may look a little red. It's cedar season here in Texas and it's kicking my butt big time. Okay, so what this video is all about is our initial impressions on E6 version 1.6. We're gonna jump right into the program. So what that means is these are just initial impressions. This is the first time we've gotten our hands on this program and I wanna review it for you from a first time perspective. So if you're getting this program at home for yourself, what you have to be looking at what to look for. We're gonna walk you through some of the pro, uh, problems that we may have with it and solutions to those problems as far as things like putting and different features. So this is gonna be our first go around as well. But an initial impressions video I think is really important because you're gonna see if you were to purchase this for yourself and actually go through it the first time, these are some of the problems that we're gonna encounter and we're gonna show you how to handle some of those problems as well. So it's really good to go get through this as far as testing it from this kind of perspective to give you an idea at home as far as what exactly you have to do to set it up for your right settings and what you want to do at home as well. So we'll walk you through that. We'll show you some of the other features as far as gameplay, some of the practice features and different things that you'll want to see at home. So stick with us through the video. We're going to play three holes of golf for you today as well on E6 version 1.6. And of course, if there's anything that we don't show you on the video, let us know and we'll get a video out to you real soon. Okay, so let's check out some of the features that we have to work with with E6 Golf version 1.6. So, other doesn't really have much in it. You can take a look at that for yourself, but we have play, practice, and event. So let's just start with event, just to give you an idea. There are some events that you can choose from. I'm obviously logged in already. So let me go ahead and move on to the next screen. So here's past, current, and future events up here. You can create your own event up here. But basically, let's just say I wanted to come in and pick E6 online tour, this is stroke play, you can click it. If you want to do it closest to the pin, you can pick any of these down here. So let's just say I want to do the E6 KP tour bountiful. I'm gonna click on that. It gives you some details as far as what it is, the start time, the end time, uh, give you an idea as far as how many entrants have already entered that event, in this case 238 out of 5,000. You get 10 attempts from 182 yards, it shows you the whole. It shows you the leader as of right now, and you can actually click on start and try that event out. So that's one option that you have as far as events. So that's really cool. We might try that out as well. Um, let me walk you back through some of the other features as well, though. Okay, so if we go back into events, you'll see that here's all the events that have been set up. There's only about probably 15 events, maybe at the most, that have been set up. You can create your own event. Um, it is cool that there are some features like closest to the pin competition, stroke play, different things, but where E6 right now is currently lacking is the inability to play online with other golfers, which is obviously very important, and the ability to play on a tour as of right now. I know E6 Connect is coming out sometime in the future. As far as when it comes out for SkyTrack, we don't quite know that yet, but there are gonna be, hopefully in the future, E6 Connect will transfer over to the SkyTrack, and there should be peer-to-peer -peer competitions, there should be an online tour, uh, so there's going to be a lot of really cool features coming out, but E6 version 1.6 as of yet doesn't have that. It does have these cool events. You can see you can kind of compete against other golfers, but you won't be able to play with them online at the same time as some of the other uh, simulator programs have, which is definitely a disappointment. But this one's been out a little bit longer than some of the others as well. So we'll hopefully see a lot of that features in E6 Connect. That's what we're praying for. That's what we're hoping for. And hopefully we get some more info on that real soon. Okay, now if we go back, uh, we'll back out of this, go back to, now we have the option to play or practice. If I were to click on practice, it will automatically take you to the practice screen in which we can choose the driving range, practice session, scoring zone, chip and putt, and other features. Let's just say we wanted to go to the driving range and test it out. You'll see an idea as far as what the driving range looks like. And basically, it's just a traditional driving range. The ball flight looks pretty good. I just kind of wanted to show you what we're looking at here. And if we were to want to exit here, you just click the little E6 logo on the bottom left there. And now we can change different things in here as well, like choose the practice area. That's where you can go and pick different things. But if we're in the driving range and we click that logo, if we want to see things like 
Uh, we want to change the left-handed features if you want to do the scoring zone practice sessions. Let's just show you. Let's change uh, change this to scoring zone. And you can kind of see here, you can increase the width. You can pick a target as far as what you're aiming for. You can decrease the width and size of the actual scoring zone, which is nice. You can center the target and then accept it. As far as where you want it to be, you can drag it also, which is very nice. Shows you the yardage up here at the top. In this case, let's just say... 142 yards you can move it left to right which is really neat and then if you want to save that you'll go ahead and click on accept target and that's what we're aiming for you'll see the flag stick here which is really cool i like that feature up here on the upper right you'll see a little map so that's nice you have a nice practice feature as far as targets what you want to aim for um, similar to what you would see on skytrack the application itself i do like that that's built into the simulator program that's definitely a nice feature all right, so let's just say we want to back out of that and let's go ahead and choose a practice area again. One of the neat things about it, chip and putt, it's definitely really cool. This is something that the SkyTrack app does not have as of yet, so I like that. In here, you can pick anywhere you want to choose to either chip or putt from, which is nice. So let's say I want to chip from over here. Go ahead and click on that and then click on the plus symbol. It'll then change the view. You'll be able to see the flag stick. You'll be able to see the green. Okay, so let's say we want to see the grid lines. Obviously, I think that's important when you're doing chipping and putting. We'll click that E6 logo here at the bottom left again. And in this case, we're going to go here to the check mark. In here, you'll be able to change different things like the putt arrows, um, how long the putt arrow stays up, the grid. In this case right now, it's set to always off. We're going to go ahead and change that to always on in this case for now. Ball size, small, medium, or large. Let's just start with the medium, and we'll see how that looks once we get going here. All right, so you can click on boost. You can change to left-handed. So if you are a left-handed golfer, you can change that, and it will automatically change that for you as you come up to golf, which is nice. You can change your pin position again, as we showed you. Click anywhere on there, click the plus sign, and it will change the pin position, which is nice. So I like that feature, obviously. And that's pretty much it as far as the settings. And here you can change the on the bottom right here where the weather icon is you can change different things like the green hardness green speed is medium right now fairway hardness is moderate terrain penalty disabled you can change that as well so that way if you do hit it in the rough or you hit it in the sand it will penalize you so you can put that on or off and for now we'll leave it off because we're not doing the actual course play i'm going to show you a little bit more but when we get there i'll change it the way i like it and show you on the video as well uh, weather clear, practice win, you can turn that on or off. I leave it at zero. I want to see true shots, you know, as far as what we're doing. And then the last feature, time of day, midday. So really not much to change there. We already went through most of the settings as far as what we like. So we're going to go ahead and close that out. All right, so now let's go into play mode. Now we have the option to pick a new round of play. And here I am. I'm already logged in, so we're good to go. If you want to add guests, that's awesome. You can do that here. You can create an account for that guest, I believe, and then you could also just add them as guests. So let's say I have a guest now, and let's just name a player one. That's fine. They're going to play from the same tee as me, but let's say it's a left-handed golfer because I've had some questions on how it works for left-handed golfer, so we'll do that as well. So here we go. We're set up. We're good to go. And here we have everything ready to go. We'll click the arrow here. And with the standard E6 version 1.6, these are the courses that you get. Let's see how many it is. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So you get 15 courses with the standard E6 version 1.6. And I believe that costs you, if you purchase it outright, roughly $1,500, I believe. Um, so that's, you know, 15 courses. And there are course packs that you can add. Most of them somewhere around the $299 mark. I'll give you some data here so you can see it on the screen as well. All right, so let's pick a course. Let's just test this out a little bit and see how we look. I'm going to pick just to start with, let's start with Bay Hill, Club, and Lodge. So we're good there. We're going to click the arrow. Here you can change all the settings, mulligans. I, I'm going to leave it as unlimited just because we're going to do some practicing. Time of day, video, classic mode, ball mode, TV mode. I'm going to pick ball mode. That's my favorite setting. Uh, I like the way it looks that way the best. Gimmies, I'm going to put inside, let's see. Can, these are your options. Player putts out inside two feet, four feet, six feet, eight feet, ten feet. Player decides. 
computer decides or auto score. So I'm going to put inside four feet. I think that's pretty realistic for a simulator golf. We'll leave that. Sky type, you have clear. You can choose different options, partly cloudy, cloudy, random. We'll leave it at clear, sound on or off. Put putting arrow, a line break, no putting arrow, play break. So we'll see how that works out in the gameplay. I'll show you that, and we'll see which mode we like the best. I may not have a putting arrow at all. That's, that seems more video game golf, but we'll see. For now, I'm just going to leave it as play break. Wind, none. You can choose to have wind or not. Auto continue. We'll leave that at five seconds. Arrow fade. That's when you have you do actually have the putting arrow up. I'm going to leave that up for, we'll say, five seconds. Start with that. Green, hardness, moderate, hard, soft. I'm going to pick hard. I'm going to text this. We have hard uh, greens. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to, this is the green. I'm going to pick just moderate. That's fine. Auto flybys. I'm going to turn that on. Terrain grid, I'm going to leave that on uh, at all times. I like to see the terrain and what that's doing around me, so that's good. Green speed, we're going to leave it as medium just to see how that works out. We're going to leave the measurement as imperial. You can also change it to metric if that's what you have in your area. Ball size, small. We'll start with small. We'll see what it looks like with the different settings. Fairway hardness, I'm going to change that to hard. We do have hard fairways here, so that's what I'm used to. I'm going to leave it at hard. Terrain penalty. For now, we'll leave it disabled. We'll see if we can change that as we're in play. Um, main view tracer, we'll leave as comet. And then pin position, we'll put as medium, just to try that out. And then top view tracer, we'll leave as solid. So I think we're good there. Elevation, if we want to set your elevation to your current area, in my case, I'm at 1500 elevation. So I'll put it close to that. It's a little finicky, obviously. So 1538 is fine with me. All right, so we're good there. Click the arrow. Now here you can select if you want to play 9 holes, 18 holes. You can pick which holes you actually do want to play. So we're going to pick uh, just a couple holes today. So let's just do... Let me clear it all out. Let's say I want to pick hole number 2. Hole number 2. Hole number 8. And hole number 15. We're going to play 3 holes for you today. See how that checks out. And we'll go ahead and click on the next arrow. In this case, these are all your game options that you have to work with with E6 version 1.6. There's a ton of them. And we'll go into that later in another video. But you'll be able to see all the different options that you can play in E6 1.6. So there's a ton of play options. And it basically, it's whatever you like to do on the actual golf course. In this case, I'm just going to play a normal stroke play. I think we're good there. And now, no more options to select through. I'm going to go ahead and click on start. And we'll get some game plan for you and let you see what it looks like. All right, so here I am about to hit my first shot on this par three. So what I did was I set up a left and a right-handed golfer because I want to see what happens when we switch between a right and a left-handed golfer. After that, I'll probably remove the left-handed golfer just so you can see some of the gameplay. But I want you to see, I'm set up right now for the right-handed golfer. The dot is right here where my ball is. And we'll see if that moves once I hit my shot and we switch it over to the left-handed golfer. All right, so apparently I crushed that shot. I'm used to playing a different simulator. That carry seemed a little bit longer than what I'm used to with a four hybrid. I normally see around 180. This one was actually 207 total. So let's see if that is definitely something to look into as well. All right, so I hit my shot. And when I hit my shot, I was set up as a right-handed golfer and the dot was right around here. Now that I hit my shot and we're up to the next golfer, it automatically moved the sky track into left-handed golfer mode. So now the dot moved to right up here. So now what you would do essentially is if you did have a left-handed golfer, you would just have to move the sky track over here or wherever you need to set it up for a left-handed golfer to swing. They'd be able to hit their shot and you'd be able to change it back. So one of the things that has not come out yet for the sky track is a slider with a swivel base. Something that you'd be able to, let's say, slide back and forth if you want to change your putting surface. Or even just say you want to leave it in a set position, but you want to be able to swivel it back and forth between right and left-handed golfers. So it'd work ideally for somebody that has, say, a golf mat here, a golf mat here, and then a space in the middle. So two single-sided 
golf mats, one for right-handed golfers, one for left-handed golfers. It would then be able to swivel and go back for the left-handed golfer and then swivel back for the right-handed golfer without you really having to pick it up, move it, set it, all that kind of stuff. I'm actually working on trying to do something like that. So keep an eye out for that in the future. Um, that's a project that I'm working on and hopefully we'll have out to you guys to take a look at and give you instructions on that as well here in a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the left-handed golfer now. So I did get an idea as far as how that works. I wanted to show you guys at home. So I'm gonna remove the left-handed golfer now and go through the rest of the gameplay, see what you guys think of E6 version 1.6. All right, so here we are. We gotta hit a chip shot onto the green. And here you see the flag stick on the green. Let's say you wanna put it here. Shows you the distance. If you drag it, let's say I wanna just know where it is, where it is to the edge of the green. I'll put my flag stick there. And you'll see over here, it's 25 feet five inches and it's 27 inches downhill from the location I'm at now. So if I want to know exactly how far it is to the flag stick, I'll drag it there and you'll see that it's 31 yards to the flag stick. So I need to hit it somewhere around 25 yards, maybe slightly shorter than that to land it on the fringe and hopefully it'll roll to the flag stick. Now let's see if we can change or see what the actual green does as far as the green grid. Is there a way to do that? That's one thing that, uh, I can't figure out how to do so far. So this is all just all initial impressions of E6 and trying to figure out certain things first time playing and walking you through it as well. So if I wanted to see the terrain of the grid, what would I need to do for that? So the only option I found so far is to drag this grid towards the terrain and then see what it's basically doing. So from right here, it looks like it's gonna break to the left and then go relatively straight from there. So I'm gonna aim slightly right of the flag stick. Again, I'm gonna try to land it about 25 yards or so. I'm going to look before we publish this video and give you an idea on how exactly to change the terrain of the grid or see if you can view it uh, if I find out that information for you. Hopefully that is something you can do, something I'm used to on other simulators. So let's see if that's gonna be an option for us or not. Let's get back to the shots. All right, so when I remove the left-handed golfer, it put my dot right back where it needs to be for me. So I'm good to go with this shot now. It's gonna be a 32 yard shot. And again, I'm gonna aim about 25 yards. So let's see if we can get it close. All right, so that was a 17 yard shot. Uh, so, so far what I'm noticing for me is a big difference in distances. On the hybrid shot, I hit it pretty decent, but it went 207 yards, and that's not what I'm used to seeing. On the chip shot now, near the green, now of course I was in the rough, but I don't think I have the penalty on as of right now. Um, I hit what would normally be on other simulator programs around a 30 yard chip shot. It went 17 yards in this case and straight into the bunker. So, let's keep playing and checking it out and see what happens. Let's check the settings one more time to see if we are being penalized for rough shots or not. I'm going to go back in here under the weather settings, I believe. And here we have terrain penalty disabled or enabled. We had it disabled. So as far as the distance of the shot being a little off, that shouldn't have affected us. But I just wanted to check that real quickly. Okay, also I have a bit of an update for you. I think I figured out how to read the terrain on E6 version 1.6. If you were to drag your mouse here anywhere on the green going to have this little indicator pop up with a check mark x an arrow and then a little half circle here or circle if you click on the arrow you will now see the terrain of the green and now you can drag it right or left so that's going to give you at least an idea on the terrain of the green but if you're looking at it from above let's see if we can zoom in here you see the different features if you click the flag stick you'll be able to see it from the flag stick point of view if you click the ball you would see it from the ball point of view we can go back now to our shot or we can click the arrow to go back to the green again so this is basically i think what you're looking at as far as the terrain and what you have available to you this is what we're looking at i wish there were some dots or different things that would indicate the break a little bit more severe or not uh, but so far this is what i found out as far as the terrain and how you can best de basically determine which way your ball is going to go 
But now I'm ready for my shot, so I'll go ahead and click on the plus sign here, and we're hitting out of the bunker. We're looking about 43.4 feet for the shot. We're 4.5 feet uphill. All right, so let's take the shot. We're 14 feet roughly uphill. A little harder than I wanted, but it was pretty close. All right, so let's look at that putting feature now that we're here on the green. If we were to go into the putting and we take a look at that. But here we are, we're gonna go ahead and put it as play break for the option. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And here we see the green grid and we see that it's going to be set up as play break. So let's do this, let's hit a putt. I have Mulligan set up, so let's hit a putt and we'll see, I'm just gonna hit it straight and we're gonna see if it's gonna break or if it's already lined up our putt for us. So with the play break option right now, I have a putt of about 22 feet, roughly 23 feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and putt it and we'll see what that does as far as if it's playing the break for us, obviously, or just aligning this up. And then we'll change it to the align break and see what the difference is essentially. So 22.9 feet and we're three inches downhill. All right, so putting is always a little difficult from sim to sim, depending upon what you're using. Right now we have the speed at normal. From where my ball is to where the screen is here, it's roughly about nine feet. Um, so because E6 version 1.6 doesn't have a lot of online tournaments or anything like that, uh, or an online tour, what I would suggest is that you play around with putting a bit to see when it actually, wherever your distance is to the screen, you set up a putt roughly from that distance with little to no break and little to no slope and kind of line that up a little bit the best that works for you. So right now, you'll see on the video, if I were to hit a nine foot putt, will it actually go nine feet or will it go 15 feet or will it go shorter than that? So we'll test that out, play around with that setting a bit as well. But for now, I'm gonna estimate around a 22 foot putt and see what happens. Again, we're going to be putting straight to see what happens with the putting feature. Right now we have it on play break. All right, so distance was actually pretty good on that one. Uh, so it, you did see though that it didn't, it was just basically showing us what that break was doing. It didn't align it for us, obviously. All right, we got a par four, 350 yards for this one. Two hundred twenty-four yard drive for that shot. Not too bad. Okay, so if I were to click on the green and put a flag stick there to see, you're seeing I'm roughly about one hundred thirty-nine yards, but I'm also thirty-three inches downhill. Let's go to the green now. I'm starting to figure this out a little bit more and more with each shot. We're gonna click that arrow, and then now you'll see the slope here. If I were to drag the flag stick over here, you'll see that I'm actually going to be putting downhill to the flag stick from there. And if I were to move that flag stick to the other side, if you look in this down here corner, down here in the upper left, you'll see that I'll be putting uphill. So obviously I would like to aim over here, but it leaves me a little bit less room. So I'm gonna aim just slightly short of that. And in this case, I would be putting a little bit downhill from there. But if I could land it over here on the left side, ideally that'd be the best spot. So let's give that a shot, see what happens. Click the plus sign again or the check mark. We're good to go with our shot now. Okay, so for me, a 133 yard shot would normally be an eight iron. So we're gonna give the eight iron a shot here and uh, see how we do. All right, so 133 yards total distance. I hit the green. We're putting for par. Well, actually we're putting for birdie. All right, so you obviously see how surprised I was to be putting for birdie. 
Let's go ahead and check that setting again for the putter. So we're going to go ahead and change that setting one more time. And in this case now we're going to put a line break and we'll close it out. So now what I'm assuming this is going to do is align our putt for us. So all we have to do is putt straight. Let's see if I'm right. We have a putt of 30.7 feet. We're nine inches downhill. I like the speed the last time I tested it on normal. So I'm going to leave it there this time again. And let's hit that putt and see what it does. All right, so again, a 30-foot putt. My, uh, my putt should be aligned for me, so I'm just going to hit it straight again and see what happens with the ball this time. Okay, it broke. I don't know why it broke. It should have lined it up for me, but it could have been the speed. So let's try it again. All right, so it should have aligned it for me, but you obviously saw it break hard left of the target line. So let's try to hit it a little bit harder this time and see if it's going to align it for me or what's going on with it. No, that broke immediate left again. I'm going to change it back to play break. And let's test it out one more time. All right, let's go back in here. We're going to go back to the check mark, putt arrow. We're going to put back on play break, and we're going to try this one more time and see what happens. All right, let's hit this putt a little harder to see if it actually does the break for us. Okay, so start a little straight this time. It didn't break straight left as when we had it in the line mode. But I'm going to try one other thing. All right, so if I want to speed up the green, I'm going to click on the weather indicator again. I'm going to go to green speed. And in this case, I'm going to try out fast just to see because I'm used to being a little bit faster on a simulator. So let's go ahead and try fast out and see how that does. And I have it set up on play break just to mess around with this a bit. I want to give you guys an idea on which setting I think is best for you. All right, so I moved the speed a little bit faster in this case. Let's see how that works. So I'm five feet away now with that play break. I'm going to change it back to a line break now again. All right, so I put it back on a line break, and now the speed's a little closer to what I'm used to with other simulator programs I've used. So if I'm guesstimating right, I think this is going to break hard left right off the bat, which shows us that play break will automatically set up that break for you, and you just have to worry about speed from there. So let me try it here. I bet you if I hit this same speed, it's going to break hard left of that target line right away. So take a look at that and see what you think. And I made the putt. So I'm getting a bit confused with this. I'm going to find out for sure exactly what I need to do. I'll let you know on screen. All right, so I have the answer for you, courtesy of True Golf and their user manual. I'm not one to do a lot of user manual things up front. I like to kind of jump into the program and see what I can figure out. But in this case, I wanted to make sure I get you the right information. So the play break feature, that what that does, it will align the player to the hole regardless of break. So basically, it lines you directly up with the hole, at least according to them. To me, it looked like it was still aligning up right of the hole. But with that actual break line that it was showing you, it was covering basically what it was doing. So with the play break, you'll need to adjust right or left depending upon the way the break is going. With the align break, it lines you up in the direction of the break itself. So with that system, the way it's set up there, you should be able to hit a putt and only worry about the actual speed of the putt to make that putt or not, as you saw with my last putt, versus having to also align the break as well. And this shot on this hole, I'm going to take the, everything off. I'm just going to leave it with the putting grid on, and I'm going to see if I can figure out how to align that putt. The only problem I see so far with it, at least with the initial impressions, 
is the fact that you don't see any brake line indicators on the actual green. And if you take that putting grid off as far as the actual putting line where it shows you, you're not going to be able to get that information. So we'll see if we can figure that out or not. And if we need to leave that putting line on. So in this case, in that type of case, if you don't really like that feature line, you just want to know which way it breaks, what I would suggest is put it on play brake, align that putt up yourself. Obviously, you'll need to align it right or left depending upon how far the brake is. And I think that's probably going to be your best bet with E6 version 1.6. Oh, and one more thing. I'm going to leave the link to the TrueGolf user manual in the description of this video. So if you want to check it out, feel free to click on that link as well. All right, so I already went ahead and aligned up my shot. This is another par four. This is going to be 371 yards to the pin. Let's hit the shot and see how we do. Got through those trees, luckily. I'm in the middle of the fairway. All right, 228 yard carry and a total distance of 254. That's gonna leave me with 138 yards to the pin for my second shot. All right, so 138 yards to the pin, I'm gonna use a seven iron. I am downhill, but I wanna see how much that basically affects my shot. So let's hit a full shot with a seven iron, which would normally go about 150 yards, I would think. I'm gonna try it out here and see exactly what it does being downhill that far. Solid strike. All right, so 138.7 yards is actually a pretty good shot for me in that situation. All right, so here we are in the green again. Let's go ahead and just try this initially. I'm gonna take the putt arrow fade off. I'm gonna leave the putt arrow off altogether. And in this case, we're gonna go ahead and take the putt arrow off as well, so no putt arrow, no putt arrow fade, but leave the green on. So let's see, now we have the green. Let's see if there's any indicator of the break whatsoever. So if I were to click right of that green, we'll see up here on the upper left, it looks to be pretty flat shot. If I were to click left of the green, So it looks left of the green, if I were to drag myself over there, it looks like it's going to break downhill a bit. And if I were to click right of the green, over here, and I take myself to that shot, I'll be uphill as you see the line going uphill. So it looks like then, in this case, we're going to have a left to right break on that putt. So this is one way that you could essentially do this if you wanted to. So I'm going to try that a little bit, and I'm going to aim left of that flag stick. And you'll see that I'm 21.9 yards away. And to me, it looks like it's a relatively flat putt. So I'm going to aim a little bit left of that flag stick. Maybe not so much. Maybe a little bit left right there. Let's go ahead and test this putt out, see if we can get it close to the pin, or hopefully make a putt here. All right, so you saw the way that I aligned that putt, essentially, without having the putting arrow. I know a lot of true golf enthusiasts or a lot of golfers that like playing real golf outdoors probably won't like that arrow. It seems a little too video game-ish to me if you're trying to play realistic golf. Now, let's see. Some people may not want to go through that whole process of clicking left and dragging it. I understand that. I may not want to do that myself. But I'm going to try it just to see if we can get that accurate. I'm going to see if this putt actually breaks right as we're putting. It's, again, it's going to be a relatively flat putt, so let's hit it and let's see how we do with that shot. 21.9 yards away, we'll test out the speed as well. Okay, hopefully it breaks right. All right, so speed's pretty good there, I think. 25 yards, I hit it within gimme range. So I'm liking the speed on fast, personally. That's what I'm close, I'm used to using that a little bit faster as far as simulator golf and what I see through other programs. So I'm going to leave it on fast for me, but you want to test that for you at home. And for me, if I'm doing one option or the other, 
I'm probably not doing a line break for putting just because I don't want it just to be a video game where I'm just putting straight without having to have any skill involved there. I would probably either put it on play break and then adjust your putt right or left or you can take the whole putting arrow off completely and do what I just did in this situation where you test out the green to see where that break is. That's obviously more like real golf but if you just want to get through a round a little bit quicker you can definitely do that play break option have that arrow fade away after three to five seconds roughly and then align your putt up that way i think that's also a really good tool um, so so far you know i'm really liking e6 version 1.6 with the initial testing i'm going to definitely do some more in-depth testing as well and get that info out to you but i wanted to kind of give you an idea at home of what exactly e6 version 1.6 is doing for me it's my first testing with it uh, so basically I wanted to get it out to you and let you get a feel for it at home um, But I'm gonna be doing obviously more info and more testing out for you here in the near future All right, so thanks again for hanging out with us and watching today's video again This is just initial impressions on e6 version 1.6. I just got my hands on it I wanted to test it out for you at home, especially now as you SkyTrack users at home will know uh, Jack Nicholas perfect golf is no longer an option for you if you hadn't already subscribed to it. so if you're a new SkyTrack user you're going to have to choose between different simulator programs, E6 version 1.6, Creative Golf, Fitness Golf, and the Golf Club, as well as World Golf Tour for the iPad only. But World Golf Tour is one player only. All the other versions are going to be two players or more. One thing about E6 version 1.6 I really like is all the different game modes. So I'm going to do another video on you later, uh, just basically showing all the different game options and what they essentially mean for you at home. So if you have friends come by, test it out with you, you can play different game types. I love that feature about it. Um, it definitely has more than the golf club and other games that I've tested out so far, other simulator programs. So I like that about it. Um, so distances are a little bit different than what I'm used to. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're wrong, but it's definitely an adjustment period to go from one simulator to another. And that's going to be some of the stuff that I'm testing out as I go along through this process as well. There's not a lot of dislikes about it. It seemed to register okay for me. I know some people have complained about chipping and putting. Um, one thing I absolutely love is the practice feature, being able to take that, put your ball in different positions, test out putting speeds. Again, I figured out for me personally, the way I like the actual setup in the simulator, I like my putt set to fast. If you want to try to more accurately represent true distance in your actual simulator setup, you might want to mess around with that a bit. But so far, initial impressions are pretty good. Now, negative, one of the huge negatives is the cost. So the cost is definitely higher than all the other programs. You can get a lifetime subscription to the golf club for I believe $750 roughly. Um, a lifetime subscription or a basically a true outright purchase of E6 golf will cost you close to $1,500. So obviously a big price difference. Now the golf club, if you're testing this side by side with something like the golf club, uh, you're gonna be able to get hundreds of thousands of user created courses. Now they're not all good. In fact, many of them are actually really poor. So you have to filter through those options and figure out the right course for you. That's one thing I don't like about that program. E6, they're gonna have pretty good courses on there, but you're only gonna get 15 with the initial pack like you saw in my setup. So definitely a little bit of difference there, different things that you gotta put side by side and figure out, you know, if you're gonna buy one program or the other, these are things you need to test out. Also, make sure you check out the demos for fitness golf and creative golf. Now the creative golf demo, you actually only get one hole to play. It's not gonna give you a lot of detail. But I'm going to be testing that out for you as well here in the near future since I have access now to every simulator program that SkyTrack offers. So I'll be doing a lot of testing on that stuff for you as well. Let me know what you think about E6 version 1.6. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Is there anything that you want to see at home that I can test out for you now that I have access? Let us know. If you like this video, please give us a big thumbs up. We greatly appreciate that. And if you have not yet done so, please consider subscribing to our channel for more great videos like the one you saw here today. Don't forget about the Facebook group as you'll see in the link right down here. Definitely something that I recommend you test out. Now get on there, let us be able to communicate with you, answer any questions you have, show you videos. I'd like to see all setups at home if you have a simulator setup, or if you're building one, make sure to reach out to me. I can line you up with the right people and where you need to go. Um, that's why we created this channel. We wanted to get good content out to you, but we also don't want you to spend an arm and a leg on something like that. Um, I feel like I overpaid a bit when I was creating this setup here. So that's why I wanted to get good info out to you people at home. So as always, thanks again for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it and keep on golfing.